Hey, how's it going? If you are new to my channel, hi, how's it going? Consider subscribing because today we're talking about Nigeria. Look, what's happening in Nigeria is barbarous. It's horrible. I mean, it's complete madness. Madness. This is a lot has been happening across Africa. Several countries have been protesting for months now. And Nigeria, which happens to be where I come from, has had its own fair share of protests and bloodshed. 15 days ago, young people in Nigeria marched out across the nation protesting peacefully against the rogue police unit called SARS. They are literally known for harassing and extorting people within the ages of 15 to 35 mostly. They use brute force and attack people aggressively and most times you will find yourself under arrest just for looking good and then you will have to pay a ridiculous amount of money to bail yourself. And in the event you can't pay bail, they drive you to a discreet location and they take your life. This has happened to dozens of people for years now and nothing tangible has been done about it. The unit has been left active and most of the officers have been left unchecked while some of them even got promoted to high positions within the force. Initially, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad or SARS was set up somewhere around 1989 with the sole purpose of tackling the increasing level of crimes and kidnapping but somewhere down the line their purpose just got blurred. The unit which was supposed to tackle armed robbery started turning around and attacking innocent people and with time it gradually became worse. They started targeting people who they suspected were cyber criminals or scammers and apparently when they arrested them these people often paid huge sums of money to bail themselves out which the SARS officers of course kept for themselves. This new means of making a quick buck became lucrative to these rogue officers so they decided to take it next level and started going all bad cop and attacking every young person that just looks decent on the street so if you were wearing decent clothing or you wore nice shoes or you were driving a nice car or if you mistakenly were wearing dreadlocks as your hairstyle <laughs> my guy you are automatically getting arrested for no reason at all. They profiled tons of young people across different states in Nigeria and forcefully and violently arrested them. And after beating them up and extorting them, they either let them go or they kill them, depending on how good they felt that day. They have numerous stations where they arrest and detain young people who can't afford to pay bail and they torture them in their cells for months and when the cells start getting filled up they empty them by killing off some of the people they held hostage and dumping their bodies in a river behind the station. It's an unbearable sight to see. Their bodies still piled up in that river as we speak right now and the people in charge of the station have not been held accountable at all. No arrests have been made and literally the officers there are still working scot-free. So many families have been broken up by these SARS officials, sons without fathers, parents without children, siblings losing one another and the officers are still walking around just looking for their next victim. This kept happening rampantly until recently when a video went viral that sparked this would be revolution. A rogue stars unit was caught on camera killing a young man, stealing his car and driving off with it and they just left him there to bleed and die. The video went viral on twitter and this angered a lot of young people and everyone just had it to their necks and was frustrated with years of police brutality with nothing happening to the officers and that was how the nsars hashtag was born the hashtag was already quite popular before this incident started but immediately this video took off. That was when the hashtag went next level and everyone was tweeting their experiences with these rogue units of 
police officers. The hashtag immediately gained traction with people sharing videos of police brutality and including the hashtag literally crying for their human rights and pleading for these police officers to be held accountable. With no response from any government officials after days of tweeting and retweeting the hashtag, the good people of Nigeria decided to take it to the streets to march peacefully protesting against these rogue police officers and fight for their freedom with only one campaign and SARS. The demands were simple. Release of arrested protesters, mm. justice and compensation for families of victims, mm. launching an independent body to oversee the prosecution of officers, mm. psychological evaluation of disbanded officers before redeployment, mm. and an increase of police salaries. <laughs> Pretty simple demands. Protesters filled the streets with placards crying for justice. Protesters marched to public spaces and government offices protesting peacefully and just asking for a reform of the entire police force. But it seemed the government officials turned to Beethoven overnight and lost their hearing because all the protesters' cries just kept falling on deaf ears. This just aggravated the protesters and more people started trooping in in larger numbers to government offices demanding an answer, roads were blocked off for days, businesses all came to a halt. Protesters started sleeping on roads and outside government offices while everyone else just rallied on Twitter and other social media platforms, cheering them on and spreading awareness, tweeting and retweeting the hashtag NSARS over and over again. Multiple groups were created to fund the movement and organize the protests across different locations with different people handling food and drinks for the numerous amounts of people that were out in the street risking their lives. It was so impressive and amazing that the young people that were called lazy by their own president could create a self-funded ecosystem that functioned way better than the government. The protests went on for days and when the government saw they couldn't contain the protesters, they decided to resort to using violence to chase the protesters away. They called in the police force in some states to begin shooting at protesters and using tear gas to disperse large crowds of protesters. A number of people lost their lives by bullets that were fired from the same people they were protesting against, the police force. This just made people angrier and the crowd of protesters just kept getting bigger and bigger. More people kept pouring into the streets and the police decided to use trucks as battering rams to destroy the cars of people who came out to protest peacefully. And while doing this, they almost ran over two guys who jumped off a moving car in a bid to escape the police. How do you even attack unarmed protesters? It's just wrong on every level. People were protesting peacefully and were still getting killed by the same people they were protesting against. And the problem is none of these officers are held accountable or going to be held accountable for their crimes and inhumanity. The protesters kept pouring out onto the streets in larger numbers and making sure that all the roads were blocked off and the route to the airport was blocked off entirely so government officials missed their flights and normal people too missed their flights as well. And when the government saw they couldn't contain the crowd with the police force, they decided to hire armed thugs. These thugs would come in and cause chaos and attack the protesters to chase them off the streets. What kind of government hires armed thugs to attack peaceful protesters. Thugs started attacking the protesters and unfortunately some people got killed, multiple people got injured and surrounding hospitals were just filled with people with injuries. Although some of the protesters were able to beat back the thugs and send them off and I think some dogs were actually beaten to a pulp and then taken to a hospital and also given food after beating them up. That just goes to show you that the protesters actually know what they're doing and have hearts. 
unlike the government. What started out as peaceful protests got so violent and the protesters decided to hold a candle night to commemorate people who lost their lives protesting for a good cause and also people who were killed by police brutality from SARS and other rogue police officers. A lot of people turned up for the candle night and heartbreaking stories were told to encourage the protesters and also remind them the reason they were doing this in the first place. This really inspired the crowd of protesters and more and more people started coming in to protest for a loved one or a friend or just someone they knew who had a run in with these officers. Almost everyone had a story or two about police brutality by SARS officers and for the first time the entire country united together regardless of tribe or religion and protested against the same cause. For the first time, the air was becoming too tense for the people in power and I guess they started agitating in their seats because the governor immediately ordered a 24-hour curfew across the state, therefore forcing all protesters to go back home and give the government time to implement the new policies which we all know never really happens. They just lie to you to calm you down and then they revert to doing nothing as usual. Despite the curfew, the brave protesters came out again in large numbers across the state and blocked off the toll gate yet again and an order was given to take off the cameras from the toll gate and take out the lights as well so by nighttime the entire toll gate was covered in darkness it was covered in absolute darkness and then the government called in the army to clean up the crowd at the toll gate. This turned out to be a disaster. Whenever it got really dark, the army marched up to the gate, cutting off the protesters on both ends of the gate and completely boxing them in. And next thing, they started shooting live rounds at unarmed protesters killing many and injuring a lot more people. The street was filled with bullet shells and people living a mile away could hear wild gunfire. A few people started live streaming what was happening at the toll gate and we literally watched a guy who was shot die on the live stream. After opening fire on unarmed protesters, the commander decided to come down and ask who was in charge of the protesters and everyone replied no one was in charge no one is the leader here we are all leaders such unity and then the commander demanded everyone to leave the toll gates which the brave protesters refused of course i really have to give it up to the people who stood their ground in the face of death at that target. They're the bravest set of people I have seen in a long while. They literally stood their ground while they were being shot at, they were unarmed. The only thing they had on them was the Nigerian flag which they were waving up in their hands while they were being shot at. After the soldiers saw the protesters were not going anywhere, they decided to cover both exits of the toll gate and set a fire around the protesters trapping them in. The protesters immediately started calling for help and calling for ambulances to come and clear off the people who were still alive and injured and when the ambulances got there the soldiers refused to let them through so the protesters were literally cut off from any help whatsoever and had to start finding ways to keep the people who were shot alive but unfortunately most of them died and all the while when this was happening the soldiers still came in occasionally shooting at the protesters to try and scare them off into leaving the toll gates and i think the police also came and started shooting at the protesters trying to scare them off but some of them still stood their ground while some people were lucky enough to 
escape from the toll gate i saw a video of a boy who said three of his friends were standing and they were shot at two of them immediately died right in front of him and he had to dive into the water because he was a good swimmer and swim all the way across to the other side of the bridge of the toll gate to escape the police and soldiers that were shooting at him. After several hours, the fires died down and the soldiers started marching off to a different location. So the protesters started rushing to take the injured people to hospitals that were nearby. The hospitals were all filled with people with gunshot wounds and they were actually running out of bed space. People started donating blood and the doctors and nurses were all kept busy throughout the night. And that was when absolute chaos just took over. People got agitated and the toll gate was set on fire. Multiple buildings were raided and a bank that was along the street was set on fire as well. Gunfire was the lullaby to everyone who slept that night. And when morning came, the entire state was already in anarchy. There was chaos on the streets, buildings were getting burnt down and supermarkets were just being raided casually. Malls were broken into and set ablaze and people just looted everything they could find and some police stations were also set on fire as well. Some police officers who were captured were just killed and maimed immediately. The police officers who were lucky to escape ran off while taking off their uniforms. The governor immediately came out to control the chaos by extending the curfew and the streets were immediately filled with police officers and soldiers who were given the order to shoot on site. It was just chaos everywhere and people were just dying left, right and center. Even people in their homes had stray bullets falling into their rooms out of nowhere. And the most annoying part of all of this was while this was happening, traditional media was silent. Nothing was said about the situation and the only updates we were able to get were just on Twitter and other people that were sharing Instagram live videos of everything that was happening just a few days ago. Even right now, the state is still in chaos and buildings are being looted and burned down, but traditional media is still not talking about that. They're busy showing you other things and trying to cover everything that is happening. And when they even decided to report about the incident on the toll gate, they blatantly lied about the victims of the massacre. The Nigerian army released a statement saying they were not the ones at the toll gate that night and just denied all the accusations that were pointed at them. So if the army wasn't at the bridge shooting at people, who was it then? The entire situation is a mess and the media isn't talking about this, they're just trying to contain the situation. and downplay the casualties which is an insult to the families of everyone who has died the past few weeks and the only way to stay updated with any of this is by following any of the hashtags on twitter just clicking any of the hashtags will show you multiple videos of police brutality so all you can do now is to share this with people and try to spread awareness of what's going on in nigeria and also try to help any way you can i think the link to the donations are still open so i'll just put them in the link in the description and i'll also like to thank everyone who's doing everything they can to talk about this and everyone out there who's risking their lives in the streets protesting for a better country and while i was making this video i saw the president made an announcement on live tv and he basically had this to say, which is quite a lot. In the circumstances, I would like to appeal to protesters to note and take advantage of the various well-thought- I'll do my best to keep you updated with the situation as things unfold. So be sure to say a prayer for Nigeria right now because we really need it. Even though the government has said they have listened to everything the protesters have said and they are going to implement them, we don't know when that will be. We're not sure if 
they are actually going to implement anything because these promises have been made before countless times in the past and nothing has changed so let's wait and see what happens next anyways that's all i have for you today be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're new here the subscribe button is just somewhere down below you can just click it and pretty much join the family and uh leave the video a like i'll see you in the next video peace